Hello! In this video I demonstrate how it is possible to generate fair amounts of electrical energy with an exercise bike. What you see here is a 1970s German-made medical-grade exercise bike which I got for free from a hospital. To generate electricity you will need an exercise bike that uses a DC motor as a generator brake, like this one does. To demonstrate the possible output power of this arrangement, I will now power a 230 volts 60 watt light bulb by riding this exercise bike. I will explain the details of this setup and the workings of the electronics later in this video. It is of course also possible and in many cases more reasonable to charge some batteries with a bike rather than to drive a load directly while cycling. Here you see me charging two 12 volt 7.2 ampere hours lead acid batteries. The charging current is a couple of hundred milliamps but could be much higher if necessary. I will now try to explain the necessity and the working principle behind the electronic circuits involved in this project. The DC motor is acting as a DC generator. It has a massive steel flywheel attached to it which increases its moment of inertia, meaning that even if you stop cycling for a moment, the generator will spin on by itself for a couple of seconds. The output of the generator is connected to a so-called buck boost converter. Its output is then fed to a power inverter, which is finally driving the load. Why is this necessary? Why can't you just attach the load directly to the generator? Well, you can, but it's completely unpractical. Depending on how fast you drive the bicycle, the output voltage will vary from 0 to up to 60 volts DC, which would, for example, destroy a 12 volt light bulb that would be directly attached to it. Furthermore, the level of light would constantly fluctuate. Charging a battery directly with a generator is possible, but there would always be the danger of destroying the battery by supplying charging currents and voltages that exceed the ratings of the battery. Therefore, the generated voltage must be regulated to be really useful. In this first setup, the buck boost converter is driven by 3 to 60 volts DC but always stepping up or down that input voltage to an exact output voltage, here 26 volts DC. These 26 volts are then fed to the power inverter, which is stepping up and reshaping it to 230 volts 50 Hz AC. When I charged the two batteries, the setup was changed in the following way. The inverter was removed and the output of the buck boost converter was directly attached to the batteries. A blocking diode is unnecessary, since the buck boost converter already has a diode at its output. The two 12 volt batteries are connected in series. The exact output voltage of the buck boost converter can be adjusted by turning a little trim pot on its board. The buck boost converter can not only be used to charge lead acid batteries, but other types of batteries as well. Once the batteries are fully charged, they can then be used to supply the power inverter whenever it is necessary. For example, when your local power grid has collapsed. This 60 watt, 230 volt light bulb is powered by the two 12 volt batteries via the power inverter. Now that the principal usefulness of the buck boost converter and the power inverter should be clear, I will explain to you how these two devices can be obtained for small money and without being a rocket scientist. Believe me, it's easier than it looks like. The buck boost converter is based on the integrated switching regulator LT1070 by Linear Technology. That device can be used to realize many different kinds of topologies for switching converters. In the LT1070 design manual on application note 19, it is described how to build up a buck boost converter. Other than the IC itself, only a handful of components are necessary. 
with some basic electronic skills, some arithmetic and a soldering iron, it is possible to build this circuit on a piece of vario board. A link for the design manual can be found in the video description below. If you need a more detailed demonstration of how to build the bug boost converter, please leave a comment in the comment section and I will think about making another video about it. The circuit that I use here as a power inverter is actually nothing more than an old UPS or uninterruptible power supply, which I bought on eBay for under 10 euros. A UPS is actually a charging circuit that keeps some lead acid batteries fully charged until the power grid is breaking down. Once there is a power outage, the inverter inside the UPS is kicking in and supplying the grid voltage at its output. Uninterruptible power supplies in this form are normally used to safely shut down a PC in case of an outage. But the inverter can actually be used to supply any other kind of electrical equipment. By simply not connecting the UPS to the power grid, you can virtually simulate a power outage. Once you connect some batteries to it, the inverter will automatically kick in. Therefore, you can use the UPS as a general purpose inverter. So what I did was to take the uninterruptible power supply out of its old enclosure and build it into a new one, where I had more space to add some connectors and an outlet, so that I could use it with any kind of load and had the possibility to power it from external batteries. Here you can see me driving a 400 watts power drill from this UPS. This particular unit is capable of supplying up to 700 VA for short time and up to 500 VA of reactive power continuously to any load. Considering that the UPS is supplying a near sinusoidal output voltage at relatively low noise, it is really quite a good bargain for the money, making it in any case a much better inverter than your typical 12 volt car inverter, which normally delivers square wave output at very high noise. So if you're interested in generating electricity at home, repairing electronic devices or reusing equipment that is regarded as useless by others, then please watch my other videos and please subscribe to my channel.